Joining us now to discuss the threat of cyber attacks, Scott Larson, former FBI cyber crime chief and CEO of Larson Security. Scott, thanks so much for Skyping in from North Oaks, Minnesota this morning. You, you bet. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Well, we really appreciate you being here, too. And let's let's deal with this this breach at Homeland Security, uh, both the information at risk and what it could mean to our abilities to protect the homeland. Uh, it, it is very damaging. Uh, the whole background process is about uh, finding out people's loyalties and where they can be compromised for a hostile intelligence service to take advantage of them. And if all of a sudden in the whole process, all those reports, the backgrounds, and what we call adjudication uh, is available, you know, that, that is a espionage threat of the highest degree. Now, also you have the identity theft issue as well, because you're gonna have everybody's uh, background information, the whole, uh, you know, from date of birth, social security number, where people were born, the whole uh, you know, you name the type of uh, uh, particular data point that we conduct uh, backgrounds with, you can use that and get credit and, and all the identity theft that we've heard about, you know, on and on for the last 10 years or so, that's getting even more busy today. Scott, can you tell, uh, tell us, are cyber attacks a new wave of what you would call terrorism? Um, I, I don't know that it's terrorism yet. Um, it's definitely criminality and criminal syndicates and espionage. So if you separate espionage, you know, we talked a lot about the advanced persistent threat, the Chinese threat. Um, that is hacking into our corporations and to our government and defense computers and stealing our intellectual property and getting other information, such as from USIS here in the background contracting field. Um, the cyber terrorism, for the most part, has been more what we call hacktivism, where people are taking up causes, the Israelis versus Pakistan, or excuse me, India versus Pakistan, or maybe the Israelis are against Hamas. We saw it a lot in Kosovo uh, 10 years ago. So that is more what we see in the terrorism, but of course we fear our energy grid and our electrical grid being taken over. Well, there are, it boggles the mind to think about what could be at risk, Scott. And as you were sitting here talking about the identity and the, uh, the uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, not only compromising information, but you mentioned that identity theft. Uh, I'm not going to write a novel here because, after all, we've got some yeah. of your valuable time to ask questions. But you can see where this sure. is heading. So a real problem with state-sponsored cyber spying. Let's turn to the, uh, the hacking prompted, we believe, by the Russian mob. Over a billion internet passwords. What is at risk in this situation, and what are they going to do with the information they've gotten? Wow. Uh, it, you know, of course, it, it, it depends on what they have. But if you can think of 1.2 billion passwords across the internet, and most of the internet still is the US, North America, and Europe, involved in e-commerce and our everyday lives, online banking. So it, 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 is, it is almost, it's such a big number that uh, obviously everybody's concerned about their own uh, login IDs. They need to change their passwords probably and, and get into a, a process of doing that on a normal basis, but definitely a huge problem. Scott, we also want to talk about what the founder of the security firm who uncovered the Russian theft had to say. Take a listen. We were able to research this particular gang and find this uh, staggering uh, discovery. Russia is one of those hotbeds of uh, cybercrime because uh, people there are intelligent, but they, they feel that their crimes will go unpunished. Scott, would you agree with this? Uh, I do to a certain uh, extent. You know, after the fall of the Soviet Union, it wasn't illegal to hack in Russia. There weren't laws on the book. So when I was an FBI agent in 1990s, there, we had all sorts of problems. One of the first big hacks was Citibank back in around 1995. And then we started seeing uh, security, uh, under the security guise of hacking companies and saying, I'll fix your, your company. In fact, uh, former Mayor Bloomberg, when he was running uh, Bloomberg, actually went over to London and we lured somebody over there. Um, 
my squad in Washington field office in Washington, D.C., we actually cultivated a Ukrainian hacker and met with him in London and then turned him into a cooperating witness. These syndicates have been going on for you know two decades and they're getting more sophisticated. To couple that with us being much more online and interdependent in how we conduct our daily lives using our smartphones and the internet. Scott, only a couple of minutes remaining. You touched on this a minute ago, but I want to return to these threats that, uh, well, in a sense, all of these things affect all of us, but especially our electric grid, its vulnerable, its vulnerability. If you were looking at risks, does the grid go to go to the top of the list, or how would you prioritize the threats you see in terms of a possible cyber attack? Um, the grid is right there, and I'd also put our overall telecommunications, because everything runs on power and both phone and data communications. So those two together are the crown jewels for what we need to protect. Uh, about a minute left. We heard a report that we are in danger of confronting a cyber Pearl Harbor. Have we done anything to counteract it? We've got a minute left to talk about that, Scott. You know, you know, we have. There's, there's been a few things um, on, a, on a high level from the White House, the cyberspace security. Um, we, we've gotten there, but having done this in the, in the late 90s, it's amazing how we're kind of just going back to that time frame. We, we're kind of gone in a circle. So, so there's a little bit of more awareness, but it's still a lot, a lot of work to be done. Well, on that note, Scott, uh, Scott Larson, we'll uh, stop right there. Have you back to talk about this in the not too distant future. And uh, we really appreciate your insights, your experience, and your analysis of this situation. Thanks so much. All right, thank you very much. Scott Larson, talking about the threat we confront uh, via internet and cyber hackers. What are your thoughts on it? Why don't you uh, tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum and our program will continue right after this.